All right, if there's one term to uh, sum up USC spring practice, that's air raid. Everyone wants to see the air raid, wants to see how effective it is, how it's going to be run, how potent, exciting, and explosive it's going to be this fall at USC. We got uh, Matt Lowry on the line from Conquest Chronicles, who took in practice quite a few times and uh, got a good look at um, Graham Harrell's invention of sorts there at USC, what Cliff Kingsbury was supposed to be doing. But Graham Harrell, of course, with a similar background coming from Texas Tech, running this offense under uh, what most likely is going to be JT Daniels here in 2019. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football with, uh, again, Matt Lowry on the line. Matt, you've joined us a number of times. I appreciate you coming back. Break down some uh, USC football. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to come on here. Yeah, so let's dive into the air raid. You got to look at it. Uh, you got to see it uh, not fully functional. That's going to take some time, some reps. Obviously, everybody's got to process all that information very quickly. Uh, maybe get set up within 15 seconds. So this is a work in progress. They've got all of August now. They've got summer workouts to to work out the kinks and look at what works and what doesn't. But uh, what are your first impressions? I was thoroughly impressed with uh with how it looked so far i mean granted the offense is basically tailored to keep everything simplified for uh for the players basically it's just having the players go out and play but i was very thoroughly impressed and one thing that i've really noticed with the offense is how quick everything is how fast everything is we know we knew from when when Sarkeesian came, how he wanted to run everything up tempo and things weren't quite up tempo. And then with uh with with T Martin as an offensive coordinator, everything was supposed to be up tempo, but it wasn't really up tempo. USC was really on the ball. Um it was just there was no celebrating in between plays, no celebrating any big plays or anything like that. It was just quickly get on the ball and get the ball off and go. Now it won't be as fast as Oregon was under Chip Kelly. I don't think anything's going to be that fast. But if anything that I've seen is USC is going to get the ball off pretty quick and they're going to make things pretty simple. All right, Matt, uh, in terms of the quarterback position, uh, that's the guy that's got to process all this information and uh, make sure that not only he knows what he's doing, but everybody else is set in the right spot and ready to go. Uh, what did you see out of JT Daniels in particular and Jack Sears as well, who's competing for the job? Well, if anything, I felt like the spring showcase, it wasn't Sears best of showing. And the main thing that really has been catching the, the knock that's been on Sears is just his inconsistencies. One week or one day he'll look strong. And the next week it's like, he disappears or something like that, or he'll have a, a bad week or a bad day. Um, but he's still pushing. He's still pushing JT Daniels. Um, in, in terms of what JT Daniels is doing, it's pretty much what, what Graham Harrell says. If, if Daniels cannot think so much, if he just doesn't think so much, he will absolutely be amazing. Um, Daniels have actually looked pretty solid. And if I had to, if I had to name a starter, if there was a game the next this week, and if you had to name a starter, I think JT Daniels would end up being the starter. Talking USC football, we got Matt Lowry on the line. You can join him and the rest of the staff there at Conquest Chronicles. It's the SB Nation platform for USC athletics. All right, Matt. Uh, in terms of everything that you can gather from what you saw firsthand, what you read, what you worked on. Uh, information that came out of camp. Uh, who flashed? Uh, who are those players that uh, maybe uh, made up some ground and put themselves in a good position to get playing time or become impact players uh, in 2019? Well, one player to keep an eye on, and he's really been impressing during spring camp, is uh, Marquis Stepp. Uh, the, he was a freshman last year. Uh, they say he's a red shirt freshman, uh, although I have to check the, the red shirt rule on how that works out because I thought he was a red, he was red shirted last year and then they burned his red shirt due to uh, the depth issues at running back late in the season. But step to, he's actually pretty quick in, in person for as big as he is. Um, apparently he's, he slimmed down a little bit, but he's, he's a big back. He got some speed as you saw in the spring showcase. Um, 
had a huge opening and just darted through uh, a, a wide open hole. Um, who else was looking good? Um, um, with with uh, everyone's talking about Carr, about uh, everyone's talking about Stephen Carr. If he looked healthy, if you know how healthy he's going to be, he actually looked pretty good in camp as well. Um, he missed, I, I believe, he missed a week due to uh, the flu, which is something that's been going around. But he's looked pretty impressive. Drake, uh, Drake Jackson, who a lot of people were comparing to Rasheem Green and Leonard Williams, he looked amazing all camp. And you saw it during the spring showcase, especially with the one-handed interception that he had, where he just snatched the pass out of the, out of midair with one hand. And just ran down the sideline with the ball in, in the air with one hand. So he's going to be a treat to watch. I think he'll get some pretty good playing time um, on the on the defense this year. But a name that hasn't really come out like that, and this is going to be a new name that people are are going to have to get accustomed to. If you're an old school USC fan, then it's not really a new name. But that's John uh, John Jackson the third. As everyone knows, his father, John Jackson, who used to play receiver at USC, um, Jackson has looked really impressive. Like he, he's he's been absolutely the name that's been popping out where you've been hearing about Bonds and uh, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Pittman and uh, Williams. John Jackson the third is another guy you can slot in there because. How the way he's performed this spring, he's going to see some pretty good playing time during the uh, during the season and probably work his way into the rotation come fall camp. You know, Matt, if there's a position that seems to be well fortified, it's the one you just mentioned uh, from a depth standpoint, uh, but most likely from quality uh, that the wide receiver spot seems to be the strongest unit on the field for me, uh, unless I'm misreading something. Uh, uh, as you look uh, across on the defense and the offense, uh, what what would be the other positions that you would feel really good about right now? One of the other positions I would feel really good about in terms of quality would be the defensive line. And the reason I say that is because uh, Cho- Coach Chad K, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his, uh, his last name, but Chad K has, has really made an emphasis of being physical. And you hear the emphasis of, and I think I mentioned it on the last show that you had me on, you've always heard the emphasis of, 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 of defensive line coaches going, you guys got to lose some weight, you guys got to slim down. Chad Kay's actually told them, look, bulk up a little bit, you know, grab some weight, because more weight on the line will actually help the defensive line. And you're seeing it out there with uh, with their defensive line. They've looked really effective. They've somewhat disrupted the offense in certain amount of times. They have some athleticism, some good rotation, good depth. Um, almost everyone, just about everyone's healthy. Everything that you can ask for, I think that's going to be the most important thing with this defense is the production of the defensive line. Because if the defensive line this year can get a lot of production if they can disrupt the get a disruption in the backfield i think it will make life a whole lot easier for the guys in the secondary which is going to be a depleted and uh a somewhat of an inexperienced secondary and um and should help the linebackers a lot as well so man i'm going to give this a uh, name a shot here uh, chad cow ha 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 okay. i think that's what we're looking at we got a lot of h's and a's working there a ton of them <laughs> You had like uh, two, four, six, eight consecutive H's and A's. Uh, but uh, he comes in from Boise State, having done yes. a fine job there uh, with their defensive line and uh, uh, hired in December to take over at USC. I also looked up a Marquis Steps uh, game log from 2018. He played three games, so he would fit under that uh, four-game limit for the redshirt rule. Okay. So got got his most carries there against uh, Notre Dame in the Final five carries, 23 yards for Marky Step, who's uh, busting out here and showing uh, a little bit of a flash and uh, making a name for himself in USC camp. Uh, so everything wrapped up at USC camp for the spring. We look forward to the, uh, the, the, the 
August session. So, Matt, uh, before we leave you, uh, anything else that we need to run down here? Uh, no, that's about everything. Uh, I, I know Graham Harrell, he mentioned that he'll talk to the quarterbacks to let them know where they stand going in the fall camp. And um, right now it, 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 it's just watching out to see who's going to be that starting quarterback. But right now all signs are pointing to it's JT Daniels' job to lose. But whoever they throw in there is going to be tailored towards them to simplify everything anyway. So that's the, uh, that's the latest I have on that. Matt Lowry, Conquest Chronicles, SB Nation. Please join him and the rest of the crew right there covering USC athletics. Uh, Matt, appreciate you stopping by as always. Thank you for having me.